I'm Andre Hugh and this is St. Martin Island Time TV News. The new 15 members of parliament were sworn in on Monday during a ceremony and Governor Eugene Holliday addressed the parliamentarians. You are as such individually and collectively entrusted to be on the front line of St. Martin's parliamentary democracy championing good governance. That is, you are entrusted with the task to promote stable governance aimed at the continued strengthening of regulations and public policies in areas such as public finance, education, employment, social security, health care, environment, waste management, housing and safety, all to improve the well-being of our people. It is as such clear that the trust placed in you individually and collectively comes with expectations, high expectations. In recognition, in recognition thereof, Article 56 of our Constitution requires members of Parliament to, in return, take a solemn oath or make a solemn promise prior to accepting their function as representatives of the people of St. Martin. Taking an oath or making a pledge as a representative of our people is therefore a serious legal but also personal and public matter. Members of Parliament elect. It is against that background that we are gathered at this location to administer the oath of office for you to serve in the third term of Parliament. Prime Minister William Marlin, in his role as former chairman, has been given a new deadline by Governor Eugene Holliday for the submission of his final report on the formation of the new government, the Council of Ministers. The deadline is Tuesday, November 8th. Marlin was due to give his report on Friday, but wasn't able to do such as the background screening of the minister candidates is still ongoing. This is the second deadline extension. On their integrity, and there's another part of the screening that has to do um, with, let's say, them having any criminal record or if there's any investigation going against them. So the Office of the Attorney General uh, does that judicial screening, um, which would basically be checking the, the, the criminal uh, records uh, to see if there is any, um, if that candidate was ever condemned for any crime committed, um, not only on St. Martin, uh, but anywhere else that person may have lived. Now, of course, one could have been uh, condemned in a country where they never lived because they passed through as a tourist and committed something, and we may never um, get that information um, probably timely maybe, but the process is one where they search and, and, and verify whether there is um, a criminal record. Or they, they would know of themselves, of course, if there's any um, investigation ongoing against that person or is there's any reason for information that they have uh, to think that that person would pose a threat to the national security because of their, of their situation. Leonard Connor Primary School Parent Teacher Foundation President Jennifer Kanagita is calling on parents to keep their children at home on Monday as the air quality situation at the school has worsened. The school has been experiencing air quality issues for the past few days. Teachers and pupils have noticed a heavier odor when school reopened on Friday. Kanagita said the situation at the school has not changed and teachers and pupils should not work under these conditions. The stench was so heavy that pupils had to be placed in the staff room as it was unsafe for them outside. Children were seen having difficulty breathing from the mouth caps provided to them. Some of the pupils even drew pictures and told teachers they did not want to die. The GB power plant in KB continues to burn an unknown substance at the plant. Smoke surrounded the school most of the day, according to one parent. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security announced on Friday that it has selected 11 international airports in nine countries, including St. Martin, for possible expansion of its U.S. preclearance program to reduce delays and help passengers make connecting U.S. flights. St. Martin's admission to the program will make it the fourth non-U.S. Caribbean destination with preclearance. 
The program allows travelers to undergo immigration, customs, and agricultural inspection by U.S. Customs before boarding a flight to the United States rather than on arrival. The Princess Juliana International Airport, among airports in Brazil, Argentina, Scotland, Italy, Iceland, Mexico, and Brazil, to be selected for the pre-clearance program. This has been St. Martin Island Time TV News. I'm Andre Huey. Thank you for watching.